the voice of the Alabama Crimson Tide is Eli Gold. He joins us here on Big Board Sports on 1045 a Team ESPN Radio. Eli, Roger Weiland, Zach By in Albany. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm good, Eli. And you've been uh, around this program for a, a long time, so you've been you've been celebrating national championships for a while with Nick Saban getting it done. And what a terrific game last night! But how does it feel here this morning? A little different feel for this football team and for Nick to come up a little bit short last night. I guess you have to tip your tip your cap to uh, to what uh, Dabo Sweeney and, and Clemson was able to do. Well, he's done, they've done well. He's uh, It's a good ball club, a good quarterback. Uh, Renfro is an outstanding receiver. Uh, you know, it, it happens, but uh, it was a, a different feeling for me and for our whole crew. Our broadcast team has been together now for, well, seemingly forever, and we've done six national championship games as a unit dating back to 1992. Uh, we all, I started in 88. Others actually, our engineer predates that. Uh, and this was our first, uh, loss. We had never lost a national championship game that we had broadcast, uh, dating back to the early 90s. So yeah, it was a, a, a certainly a different, uh, a, a different kind of night. But you know what? Uh, I'm sitting here now outside in Tampa. The temperature is in the 70s. The sun is shining <laughs> brightly, and the world will go on. Yeah, and, and Alabama's favor to win the national championship uh, again next year, which is really just the case almost every single year. Eli, what were you most surprised about in last night's game? What I was surprised about? Nothing, really. Um, you know, you knew that, you know, you knew Deshaun Watson was a great quarterback. Uh, in my mind, should have won the Heisman. You know, there's no question. Um, you knew how talented Bowlware was. Uh, we knew from last year how difficult Renfro was uh, to handle. Um, I wasn't really surprised about anything. Uh, I knew, we all knew it was going to be a very, very tough ball game. We said on our pregame show it was going to be probably a one- or two-point ball game. Um, so nothing surprised me. Um, you know, it, uh, even off of last year, we, we knew that as great a defense as Alabama had last year, Watson was tough to control. And uh, so, again, I know I'm sounding redundant, but nothing really surprised me. Um, the outcome disappointed me. But, uh, you know, I don't know if anything as the game unfolded really surprised me. I, I was actually surprised at how well and easily Alabama was able to run the ball and, and overpower the uh, the defensive line um, when the tide was running the ball well, but once Bo Scarborough got hurt, yeah. uh, you know that obviously took away one of your that's one of your major cogs. You know, it's no different than the you know all of a sudden the Giants can't throw to Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, you lose your your one of your big cogs. Uh, you've you've lost um, the guts of your offense. Yeah, he goes out in the uh, in the third quarter, and of course. You know, you, Alabama goes up 14 nothing in this game. But still at the end, Eli, I mean, I thought, you know, great drive by Bama. And you, you, uh, they take the lead with a little over, what, two minutes to go. So it looked like maybe Bama was going to do this thing again. And then Clemson puts together the big-time drive. But if people, well, you know, all week speculated about Lane Kiffin out, new, new offensive coordinator in, do you think that played a big role at all last night? It played. It played no role whatsoever. Uh, Sarkeesian's called a wonderful game, the same game that Lane would have called. Um, you know, what, what did, you know, there were a few dropped passes. There were, you know, things here and there, but Sark did a spectacular job. Um, that was absolutely no factor whatsoever. Hey, Alabama fans have been so spoiled with the success. Well, I mean, maybe spoil is the wrong word. They've enjoyed so much success. What's the temperature of the Tide fans the, the the morning after a national championship loss? Well, to be very honest with you, totally honest with you, I have not seen a single one. Uh, a lot of folks, uh, you know, went home on an early flight. Uh, we're not clearing out until, you know, later today. Um, and sitting here at the hotel just, uh, you know, enjoying the temperature and the bright sunshine um, I haven't seen anybody from either team, uh, quite honestly. Most of the folks have, are either, you know, we didn't get, nobody got back to the hotel till like two in the morning, uh, because of the, you know, the late 
lightness of the game, uh, and then the traffic, and then if you're a Clemson fan, you were celebrating. So a lot of folks are probably either still sleeping, even at this late hour, or uh, they cleared out on a six o'clock flight and they'll you know sleep when they get home. So I'm sure the Bama fans are disappointed, and clearly I'm sure the Clemson fans are ecstatic. Um, you know, it happens. Uh, it doesn't matter which team it is. You know, the the greatest of teams. You know. The New York Yankees have lost a World Series. You know, the Green Bay Packers have not won a championship every year. The the great Boston Celtics under Red Auerbach did not win the title every year. The New York Knicks with Red Holtzman and that great team led by Willis Reed did not win the title every year. It happens, but... Uh, you know, you hate when it does happen, but it happens. Hey, Eli, was there any talk after the game about how Bama defended that the final play that Clemson scored to win the game? Not that I heard. Now, you got to understand, we were on the air for uh, a good hour after the game. Uh, that question never came up uh, to Nick Saban. You know, there were, there were comments that I read online about, you know, the pick plays that were run, and should those have been penalized? Uh, the way the play was defended was not the story. You know, it would, there was a big pick thrown in the middle. You know, two guys were picked. Um, but in the Big 12, and it was a Big 12 officiating crew, now that's how they play football in the Big 12. So the officials were used to seeing it. In the SEC, that play would have been flagged for a penalty. But, you know, you, it, it wasn't the referee. Referees didn't win or lose the game for either team. But uh, that was the only comment I have read. And, again, I've not spoken to the players. Uh, they're already uh, at the airport and getting ready to get on the plane and go. I've not spoken to anybody this morning. But just reading some of the online reports, the only concern was that there were some pick plays that went uncalled, which wouldn't have gone uncalled in uh, in other conferences, but but the officials did not win or lose the game for uh, for either team. And again, this team will uh, this team uh, Eli will will uh, reload for for next season, right? With with a young quarterback who got plenty of experience. Yeah, you know, he, he, and that's the thing people tend to forget. He he is still a true freshman. You know, at this time last year, he was getting ready to go to his prom. You know, and here he is. You know, center stage for the national championship game. So. You know, stuff happens. He'll he'll get better, and uh, you know Clemson is going to have a rebuilding situation. You know Deshaun Watson announced last night after the game that yep. you know he's declaring for the NFL draft, and I wish him all the very best. I'm glad I don't glad you don't have to see him again. You know because the guy's great. He's a you know so you know that's the thing about college ball and what has made what Alabama has done so remarkable. Uh, you know. You lose so many players each year. It's not like the Giants or the Jets or whomever can, you know, or the Bills, you know, can keep their roster, whether you want to or not. They can sometimes keep their roster intact. Uh, you know, collegiately, you're always changing. You know, a couple of years ago, Bama lost, you know, Amari Cooper and other guys. Last year, they lost, you know, two running backs who are now starting or at least playing in the NFL. Uh, the Heisman Trophy winner, you know, Derrick Henry, and, and Kenyon Drake, who who starts for the Dolphins. Um, you know, it, that's what makes it so remarkable, is how well Bama has done on a sustained basis, what with the roster turnover being what it is. Eli, quickly, w last question for me. Who's going to be the offensive coordinator for Bama th this coming year? Steve Sarkeesian? Oh, sort of, of course. Uh, yeah, that Steve is the guy. He was already designated as such when Lane left. To become the head coach at FAU, Nick Saban had already named Steve Sarkeesian as next year's offensive coordinator. And then when the coach and when Lane decided that it was time to make that move now, Sark was just elevated, you know, a, a, a couple of weeks ahead of time. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's the man. And he did a wonderful job last night. Uh, you know, nobody can fault the play selection or the play calling by Alabama last night. Yeah, totally agree with that. No doubt. Uh, that's, uh, Skark did a really good job. Eli Gold, thanks for a few minutes. Busy morning for you, I know. Voice of Alabama football, and we appreciate a few minutes uh, the, the morning after the national championship game here on ESPN in Albany. My pleasure. Good to be on. As a native New Yorker, uh, although I'm from the city, I have a lot of relatives upstate uh, in, in the Syracuse area and so on, so 
I always have an affinity to be on with, with New York Station, so it's good to be with you guys in the Capital District this morning. Thank you, Eli. Thanks, Eli. Have a great day. Appreciate it. Eli right, Gold, guys. voice of uh, Alabama football.